Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you right now, Lord God. And there is none like you, Father. We ask right now, Lord God, that you would allow our hearts to be receptive to your word, to every promise. Help us right now, Lord God, to retain your truths. Help us to be cognizant of your benefits and your promises. For, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. So we submit ourselves to you right now, Lord God. And we choose to honor you now forevermore. In the name of Messiah Yeshua, we pray. Amen and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all, let's give God a hand. I had one of those mornings when I was at work, man. I was blasting some praise this morning, man. And I was in the hall just singing loud this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was one of them days. Praise the Lord. And I give the Lord glory and honor. And to see all of you all's faces as we gather together, man, is it's always, always humbling. Always humbling. So I greet every one of you in the name of the Lord. And I thank God for every one of you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. Hallelujah. Minister T, Minister Mwamba, Minister Elect Bosco, Bosco, Erehavida. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of y'all, man. And hallelujah. Everybody that's online, Minister Sam, thank you so much. Sister Nisa, woman of God, everybody who's here, man, thank y'all so much. We got a we got a Queen Esther that's actually sharing with us tonight, man. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for all of you. All of you. Hallelujah. There's something that we're gonna talk about a little bit. Hallelujah. On tonight. Hold on like we're going on a little ride. Hallelujah. If you have your word, hallelujah, why don't you turn with me to the book of John. Hallelujah. Pastor Abu, thank you for joining with us again also tonight, man of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, bro. Hallelujah. Go to John 7. John 7. Man, I had, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really know which direction the Lord was going to have me going on today. And I'm so grateful even for Sister Shima to be bold enough to come and ask for the music request for the revival, man. It's just so powerful. And I believe that we really got to understand the dynamics of where we are and because of the obvious ploy to derail those who are of the kingdom, to try to get us to lose our sight, to lose our focus. There is a plot and a plan of the enemy to try to get us to stray away, to backslide, to turn our back, to turn deaf ears all of a sudden have eyes that can't see and ears that can't hear. Hallelujah. Y'all watch what this word says. John 7. Hallelujah. And verse number 36. Hallelujah. John 7. And verse number 36. 36. If you got it, y'all say, I got it. Praise the I Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse number 36. King Bosco, won't you go ahead and catch that one for me, man? John 7 and verse number 36. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 John 7, verse 36 says, 
What did he mean when he said, you will look for me, but you will not find me. Hallelujah. And where I am, you cannot come. What was he talking about? What was he talking about? The scripture says, what kind of saying, what was Messiah Yeshua actually talking about when he says, where I'm going, you're going to, y'all please listen to this. He's talking to a specific group of people. He says, where I'm going, you won't be able to come. Boy, I, man, I pray that none of us are in a position that the Lord is telling us. Yeah, you think you're talking to me right now, but where I'm going, you ain't coming for <laughs> Gut check. <laughs> oh my God. He said, You're going to seek me and you won't find me. He says, Where I am, you can't come. Everybody say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh my God, mercy, Father. But look at what he says in verse number 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, y'all, I'm talking about a feast. Y'all, usually when they say that word feast, that means everything is laid. I mean, they got food, everything you desire. Y'all, think about it. This feast is also comparative to the things that this world will present to you like a smorgasbord. It's like everything that you're looking for. You, you know, you want sex is everywhere. You want clothes is everywhere. You want money. They got so many different options. You want property. You want land. It's like a smorgasbord. And it's like the Lord is saying, after you got a chance to see all that and chase as much as you thought you want, is there anybody that's still hungry? Hallelujah. And you realize that all those things that you did, it wasn't good enough. It could, man, I'm so, I'm so grateful that the stuff that I did wasn't good enough to keep me locked on the outside. Glory. And I'm still granted access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like he started speaking in passcode, almost like I was telling Pastor Boo that when you come into our job, for our job at Wisdom High School, hallelujah, you need a key, a key card. You know, if somebody not there to open up the door for you, what's your sign to show that you belong there? Door's locked. Oh, it's locked. Look through the window. Ain't nobody coming. Oh, no problem. <laughs> you hear something go, click. I was on the outside. Y'all, please hear me. I was on the outside. Yep, we could be going to work and we take for granted that you've been given access to some places that everybody can't go. We talk about even, even in the house of God, we are supposed to be monitoring and looking because we understand that even Jesus himself says there's some among you that are wolves in sheep's clothing. And he's telling everybody, say, Lord, open my eyes because we need to be able to see. Real talk. What do you do if somebody who presents themselves as a husband and you find out they real? How long you want to wait? How, how, how much time do you want to spend before you find out that you thought you had somebody that was a good contender, somebody that had a lot of potential? How much time do you want to spend before you find out he ain't the one? How much time you got to spend? How much time you got a woman, man, she, she toting her Bible, man, and she wearing a skirt all the way down to the ankle. How much time you want before you find out, no matter what she said, no matter how much she bless her food, she still may not be the one for you. Everybody don't have access. Jesus is telling them where I'm going. You won't be able to come. 
And the scripture says on the last day of that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and said, if anybody is still thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Verse number 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly Hallelujah. shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Yo, what I want to talk about tonight just for a little bit is the awakening for a revival. Hallelujah. The awakening. We should not live as those who sleep. There should be something on the inside of us. This, the Holy Ghost should be on the inside of us in such a way that wherever we go, we provoke change. Wherever we go, we should provoke deliverance. Wherever we go, we should provoke prosperity. Real talk. I'm talking about prospering mentally. I'm talking about prospering in such a degree that you can look at your life and say, man, I'm good. Like, yeah, I just lost my job, but I know my steps are ordered. I'm still prosperous. Not too many people lose a job and still got a whole lot of money in the bank. Yo, you got to get to a place that you understand whether or not you got money in the bank or not. You got to really understand that you are tapped into the true source of life. The true source. Everything that we have need of is in him. And the Lord says, y'all, I'm talking about the awakening. Everybody say, Lord, wake me up for revival. Lord, the awakening for revival. for revival. Look what he says. He that believes on me. How many of y'all believe in this word? Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so listen. So, so I believe. And if you all say you believe, what should be happening wherever we go? Fight. Boy, we about to get in this word tonight. Hallelujah. Boy, we about to get into this word tonight. He says, if you believe on me, the scriptures, he said, I don't have to say it right now. He said, but I'm going to just let you know what the word has already said. The scripture says, from his belly, not from his car, not from his bank account, from the essence of who he is, is going to produce rivers. And what all of a sudden called revival. Revival. Revival out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praise the Lord. Man, I was looking at this movie. I forgot the guy's name on it. Uh, I think it's Denzel Washington's son, if I'm not mistaken. But it's this little movie called The Creator. And I want to prepare you all for such heresy. Y'all, when you, if you see this movie, you're going to begin to think about every other movie that you've seen that begin to pull on your heartstrings. Y'all, listen to me, y'all. Because of the society in which we live, we're living in a society where you can find yourself looking at movies that make you have a heart for the criminal. You have a heart for the adulterer. You have a heart for the murderer. And if that same scenario was put in your life, you would believe that you have a clear boundary of what's supposed to be accepted and what's supposed to be rejected and what's happening is y'all Hollywood is making it clear to start blurring those lines and now you don't even y'all listen to this in this movie and I don't want to just spoil it but I'm, I'm going to kind of spoil it just a little bit 
But but in this movie, there is a manifestation of AI, but it's supposed to be more or less in humanistic form. And they got some that look exactly like straight up robots, and they got some that is a, a mixture. And you could tell that it's still a robot, but it's such a mix to where you can, but they got emotions and they appear to be, and, and y'all think about it. How many times you looked at a movie, y'all watch this, we going somewhere. How many times you looked at a movie and, and somebody's loved one voice was used in a sense of distress to where if a person say, I would never go to that building, I would not go into that darkness, but then all of a sudden, the enemy will make it sound like the voice of your family member. And all of a sudden, you're like, but if they're there, I got to go. And now you got the enemy manipulating the things that matter the most to you in order to lure you to say there used to be a clear line, black, white, good, right. Evil, wrong, and the enemy is trying to cause a gradation. Like I'm an artist, so I know how to. I, I, I teach my students to make sure that you know if it's supposed to be a blend. Nah, you gotta you gotta fade it. You gotta shade it. You gotta make sure it's a blend. When somebody get a good haircut, a good haircut, a good fade is when you don't see a line. You you know they say it's a bowl cut if you just see the line. But if it's a nice fade, you're supposed to go from thick hair to no hair, and it's supposed to blend. And that's what's happening, y'all. The world of society is trying to paint right and wrong as if it's such a fade that you don't know where it starts or where it ends. Yo, we, if we do not cling to the word of God, I'm going to tell you something. If you claim to truly have faith in the Lord, the only direction you should be pointed to is a revival. There, there is no lukewarm, y'all. We can't, we can't be, we can't say I got enough. We gotta believe that if the, the Lord says, "Blessed are those who do hunger," you didn't got saved, you got baptized. Praise the Lord. Are you still hungry? <laughs> or you found a church home? You really like the people around you? Are you still hungry? I got a smorgasbord. I think I got everything. Even to just make it seem like if all you want to do is appear religious, I'll, get, I'll put you in a choir. I'll put you on a praise team. I'll let you have a good connection with the pastor, with the apostle. I'll make sure you got a, you got a parking spot. You got a seat that nobody sit there but you. And some people just say, I can relax now. And what happened to your hunger? Are you satisfied with what you saw presented to you on the table? Yo, if it was presented to Christ himself, if Christ had to be tempted of the devil, what would make us think that we would not be tempted to be lured outside of, of a place out of out of the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. So, y'all, since we've been dealing with all this um, higher education, higher learning, higher calling, I need us to understand that there is going to be so many different attacks and trials that its attempt is to cause your morals, your convictions to be retaught. And the whole reason why we come together, Sam, the whole reason why we come together is so that we can strengthen our morals. So we can strengthen our convictions. If this is what I believe, it's time to reinforce it. Let's make it even stronger. If we got a good connection, okay, now it's good to have a connection, but now let's build some support around it. Reteaching your morals, 
The enemy is trying to change the gauge on your compass. The very thing that you say what determines right and wrong, the enemy is trying to change it. Yo, this movie literally got people pulling for AI for, you know, and they're talking about there's a part, man, I, man, I wish I could. They, they're talking about there's those who were born that had more power than us, so we were given access to tempt them and to lure them outside of their position. And now there's another being that's coming to do the same thing to us what we did to them. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Amen. So now we supposed to remember it's for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody says it's for me to know. It's for me to know. We can't be wondering. Don't ever let somebody trap you or tempt you to make a, a quick sudden decision that may cost you it may cost you severely if you don't know be bold enough to say man that sounds good but let me get right back with you because sometimes people can cater to your to your your desires people can cater to the fact that that you're hungry you know what i mean like i wouldn't have did this man you know how sometimes you you know you'll look at some fast food places you know what i mean i clown with Fast up all the time. You know, you have certain places that you'll go, and, and if, if you wasn't hungry, you wouldn't worry about it. But boy, when you hungry, you'd be like, Popeye's chicken. Ooh. <laughs> but if you had money and if you wasn't hungry, you know, you ain't nobody worry about no Popeye's. But you get hungry enough. Golden chicken. Chilies. And there's something about that salsa at chilies. It's nice and salty, man. And the chili make you just want to. I mean, y'all, y'all for real. When we get together, we eat that salsa, man. We usually don't have no chips left. We just <laughs> everybody just, it is <laughs> another round. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, sir. So you gotta be careful where you go and who you talk to when you're hungry. And I'm not talking about a natural appetite yes, anymore. Sir. If you know they're going to cater or they may make an attempt, you got to be careful who you talk to and who you hang around, what type of music you listen to. Oh, my God. Because there's an attempt to change the gauge on your compass. At one point, you knew Halloween was foolishness. At one point, you knew that certain things about Mardi Gras, foolishness. Certain things, you just knew. Bunny rabbits, what, man? What they got to do with the resurrection? And all of a sudden, if you get hungry enough and, and you see the smorgasbord and you see the people you really want to hang with, and, and, if, and if what once was where your border was, but they don't have the border, but you want to be with them. You used to have a border. You used to say, I would never do that, but the ones you want to hang with, they don't have that border. So in order to hang with them, you got to lose the border. And all of a sudden, you're like, well, it, you know, it ain't so bad. I'm still saved. But all I'm doing is backslide. I'm sliding further and further away and don't even realize it. I'm going to show y'all something. Boy, y'all watch this. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel real quick. Man, I'm telling y'all going to look at this movie. It's going to make you start reflecting on every other movie. So it's going to make you think about, wait a minute. Man, this has been, this been a test for a long time. And they've been pulling on our heartstrings. Next thing you know, you looking at a movie hoping that this guy could get with this woman because they had a history when they were young. But the woman married in the movie right now, but yet you still hoping they could get together. It's changing your morals. 
The only way to, to abstain and to maintain is you got to be on a constant track for a revival to take place. You got to be on a constant place where wherever you go, you cause an awakening to take place. Somebody got to be able to talk to you. They got to talk to you, Aisha, and be like, I never looked at it that way. Wow. You're opening my eyes. What is this that I'm experiencing? I want to talk to you. I feel like, you know, somebody come to you. They come to you the next day. I, look, I read a scripture. And somebody ain't never worried about reading those scriptures for a long time. But now that they're talking to you, they come to I read, I read Psalm 23. What is that? That's like the knocking on the door of, of, of a breakthrough coming in. Because you got to remember, just as quick as you get a knock for a breakthrough or a revival, what you think is happening at the back door? The enemy is saying, wait a minute, they're getting too close. Give them what they've been looking for. What are they hungry for? Jesus was hungry. 40 days. If you be the son of God, son of man, command these stones to be made bread. Smorgasbord. Everything that you want. Power to change. That stone. Would you tone that, turn that stone into bread? Wait a minute. That stone is not used to cater to my appetite. That's a woman of God who's supposed to be building a wall. But you got the power because that stone is hungry. And until the, the clay or whatever it is that gets hard enough for it to be considered a stone is still moldable. It's like clay until it's been put in the sun, until it's been put in the, in, in, in the heat. And then it gets hard. Get that stone. Yeah, it's still clay right now, but God say it's a stone. It's still in the process. It's just a seed, but God say no, that's a tree. Man, you, you tempted to eat the seed. No, plant that seed. That seed is going to produce so much. Make that stone a piece of bread. You got, yo, I'm telling y'all, you start getting to the point where you start understanding you got authority, you got dominion, you could even use it for something ungodly and wicked. The gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable without repentance. Don't use your gift. Don't get to the point where you're so hungry you just want to be seen. You want to be heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 47 and 1. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. And verse number one. Sister Nisa, can you get that for me? Ezekiel 47 and verse number one. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47 and one reads. Hallelujah. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And behold, water was issuing from below the threshold oh, oh of God. the temple toward the east. The water was flowing down from the below south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Hallelujah. Go to verse 2. Verse 2. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And behold, the water was trickling out of the south side. Now, wait a minute. Now, y'all listen up. He said, I went to the house. I went to the temple. He said, evidently, the scripture says that there was waters coming from the threshold. It was flowing. Hallelujah. Then he 
then he says, verse number two, he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without the other gate by the way that looked east. And behold, he's bringing them now to say, okay, you see where the water is coming from. You see the source is coming from the temple. The, the water is coming from the house. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So now, now the water, everybody say the water is coming from my temple. Man, you got to, man, we, we got to stay in this place, man. We got to be in a place. What we looking, what we hungry for this awakening. Don't let nobody lullaby you. Don't let nobody rock you to sleep after you've been awakened. Lord, keep me in revival. Lord, keep me in revival, Lord. He says, I found out that the water came from the temple and it ran out on the right side. But then verse number three. Minister Mwamba, get the microphone and read. Catch that verse number three. Hallelujah. Verse number three. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits mm. and brought me to the waters. And the waters were to the ankle. Oh, my God. So listen to this, y'all. He says he brought me out into the water. And he measured a distance of a thousand cubits. Y'all, y'all know how it is. It's like when we was young and we go to a pool. And if you know you go to a wave pool, you step in the pool, and for a certain distance, you know, it's right your feet to your ankles. But then you start looking, and when you didn't know how to swim, how many of y'all know how to swim for real? Y'all know how to yeah, swim? Some. some people still don't know how to swim. Y'all, y'all know how it is. You start looking to see where that water go down, and you'd be like, ooh, I ain't going that far. But when you could swim, you kind of have a little bit more confidence. And you like, you know, you go out there and be like, whoa, let me trade. I realize I got, I got a stroke for real right now. Right. So so what's happening is he said that the man literally brings Ezekiel out into the water and he measures from here to there only to your ankle. That's like a space of grace. You expected to go to this place, but you can't stay there. Everybody say, I'm into my ankles. ankles. Y'all, that that ankle deep is a certain space, and and you were expected to walk. Y'all, don't try to force somebody way out into a, a tsunami wave. No, they're at the ankle. They had the ankles. What are we supposed to do? Walk. Oh, my God. Verse number four. Get that microphone to Brother Lule. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number four. Hallelujah. And then he measured 1,000 and brought me to the water. The water came upon my knees. Oh, my and God. Then he measured 1,000 and brought me to the water came up. No, wait a minute. Now, look. He's, he's measuring, Paisha. And then he's saying, come on. Come on. And he said, I remember. He says, I look back and I remember when it was at my ankles. Do y'all remember being at your ankles? Some of y'all in your ankles right now. But, but trust me, after so much space, after so much time, Wait a minute. I'm a little deeper now. He said it went up to the knees. He said I was up to my knees. And then he said, okay, once I got to the knees, Scripture says he pulled out the measure again. I wasn't in the water, but now I'm in the water. I I still remember when it was at my ankle. Now it's at my knees. Wait a minute. Now the Scripture says at my loins. Where I procreate now is in the water. Oh, we. At first, it just was in my feet, man. He, he changed my feet. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My footsteps are ordered by the Lord. He delights in the way that I take. 
But now it's in my knees, and now that's that's the place where I pivot. That's the place where I increase in strength. I get a chance to grow. I get a chance to make a movement. I, I'm, I'm nimble. I can be, you know, Terrence, that boy, I got videos of this boy just jumping and flipping. And a lot of stuff he's able to do is because of what he can do even with his knees and his thighs. But then the scripture says that you get to a place where the water now and today is all the way up to your loins. So now, it's in the water. What kind of water is this, y'all remember? Y'all, where is this water coming from? Y'all remember? It's coming from the temple. It's coming from a holy. So now, that holy place, that, that, that intimacy, that holiness has touched my feet, and now I was willing to walk into it. And now that holiness has made it to my knees, but now I'm realizing I got to start exercising self-control in areas that I used to be a little bit more free. Matter of fact, some of us was a whole lot more free. And now it's, it's under the water now. So the waters are to my loins. Verse number five, Minister T, get that mic, man. Read verse number five. Hallelujah. Afterward, he measured a thousand. Again, he's still measuring, y'all. And it was a river that I could not pass over. Oh, my God. So the waters were risen. Waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. So now, he brings him out and he realized. Notice, y'all. Where did he say it, it stopped at the chest? Did it say did he say got to the shoulders? He said, I realize I got to swim from here. That means that if I choose to go under and get a big stroke, your whole body got to go in the water. What kind of water is this, y'all? So now the gatekeeper is under the water. The storage tank. Is under the water. Everything about me is under the water. And y'all, it looks like it's a restriction. It looks like, man, I can't have no fun. It looks, but I need you to understand the enemy, his job is to make you focus on the smallest board, to make you see what's on the table. But but the kingdom has to make us start looking on the inside. When you begin to walk, what is it that you're possessing now? How much power did Jesus have? For him to be able to tell that old devil, man shall not live by bread alone. I'm not living based on the power I have to change the use of a person. Yeah. <laughs> it's about making them living stone. That boy looked at Peter and said, yeah, your name is going to be Petra, a stone. And upon this rock. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to tell y'all something. The enemy is going to try to make y'all turn stones to bread. That's what happened when you find out about pastors sleeping with the girls in the church. What they did was they began to utilize what they had. They took what could have been an anointing and they became crafty. And they begin to manipulate. When, when clay, I got clay in my class right now, y'all. It's in a bucket and it's kept with the top on it. And the reason why it's kept with the top on it because it has to have moisture. If you take the clay out of a moisture control container, what's going to happen to it? It gets hard. Can't be molded. So that means that whenever there's fresh clay, God is like, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your whole body to be moldable. Hallelujah. Let your mindset do not be molded after the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because I need some people that's going to be able to prove, Hallelujah. prove what is faithful, what is good. Hallelujah. Y'all getting this? Are we getting this? Hallelujah. It's heavy. 
He says, man, these waters, that boy had me swimming. I can't even pass over it unless I swim through it. Verse number six, Minister Sam, can you read that verse number six, man? Hallelujah. Unmute, man. You're on mute. Is he frozen? Sister Irene, you got it? Oh, okay. Sister Irene, could you do it? You with me? Yes, I am. He said verse 6. Yes, ma'am. And then verse 6. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and he returned me to the bank of the river. Oh, my God. So now... After we start off at the ankles, go up to the knees, then the loins are underwater. After we get to the point where we start controlling our sexual appetite, controlling God, I belong to you. God say, now I can get your heart. Now I got your mind. And now after we're able to swim, he says, you good? The scriptures say he didn't leave him out there. He brought him back to the bank. <laughs> Y'all remember Jesus himself says that his people will be able to come into the gate to go around the sheep and go out. Jacob said that he had a revelation, a dream, where he saw angels ascending and descending. There's times, y'all, that we are actually going up to a high place. And then we go out to get who else was left behind. So now, he says, he brought me back to the bank. And he said, do you remember what you saw? Have you seen this? And he calls me to return to the brink. Watch this, y'all, verse number seven. Man, this is so good. Now, when I had returned, behold, the bank of the river. Look, before all I was concerned about was the, was the water. But now that I got back out to the brink, I started noticing all these trees. These trees are tapped into the source of this river. <laughs> Y'all hear me? See, a lot of times before you come to Christ, you don't even realize who's around you. You don't, you know, you know how they say the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. You just assume everybody the same. But when there is an awakening, you start realizing, oh, that person definitely not like them. That person, they smile. But I, I used to think that person was weak and ignorant. But I realized that person's not weak and ignorant. That person's just grace. And that person has the spirit of the Lord upon them where it looked like they don't let nothing bother them. And I start realizing, wait, that's a tree. That's a tree. Wait a minute. All these seasons I'm going through, but these trees stay the same. The leaves are still green. They're still bearing fruit. See, I notice all these trees. On both sides. Verse number eight. Hallelujah. Then he said to me, these waters issue toward the east country and go down to the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. So for him to say waters got to be healed. Evidently, these were waters that was defiled at one point. It wasn't healthy enough to drink. It wasn't good for life. Maybe some fish couldn't live in these waters. Maybe this, these waters is not good to get something that you really need from this water. Oh, my God. Everybody said this river is coming from my belly. This river is coming from my belly. Watch this, y'all. Verse number nine. John, can you read that verse number nine, man? Verse number nine. Yes, sir. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, into, there will be a very great multitude of sheep, because those waters go through the go, go, go there, go, go there, for there will be for there will be joy, and everything. 
wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that any place this river goes, it changes the quality of life wherever it goes. And it shall be wherever this river goes, it will produce life. See, now, doesn't this kind of help reset you all over again? Because it helps you to understand that where you go, there's a river. You are an extension of the river. And where you go, it's supposed to cause an awakening. Who got a different translation for verse number nine? Praise the Lord. Anybody got a different translation? Hallelujah. Go ahead, man, if you got it. Hallelujah. This is the NIV. Nah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm like, oh, like, like, Go ahead. Swim. <laughs> Verse number nine. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the rivers flow. Mm. There will be a large numbers of fish. But this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. Mm. So when the river flows, everything will live. Y'all see that? Everybody, everybody say, I live. I live. I live. The scripture says, anyone that comes to me, though they were dead, yet shall they live. What will make them live? The living water. The living waters. Y'all, where is the living waters? In my belly, in me. It's in me. It's in me. Y'all, where is these living waters? It is in, in me. me. Amen. Come on, y'all, one more time. Where are these living waters? It's in, in me. me. It's in me. It's in me. In my belly shall flow ah. rivers. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Out of my belly yes. is flowing yes. rivers. Hallelujah. Not a little, not a cup, not a pitcher. Uh, it's rivers. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all watch this, y'all. Drop down to verse number 12. Look what happens, y'all, where this river goes. All kinds of fruit trees will live there. That, that's to say that if these fruit trees was in the wrong place, they probably won't be producing. But if these fruit trees get in the living water, they will live. They will live on each side of the river. They will remain green and give fruit every single month. Y'all do know this world we live in, y'all. It's a harvest time around fall. Hallelujah. That's why they do the harvest with the pumpkins and all that kind of stuff. Believe it or not, y'all, that's the harvest time. And they know that for the most part it happens that's the conclusion of the harvest every year. But according to this word, every month, every month we produce it. What, what, what's the, what kind of seeds so do we have that we produce every month? Every month. Every month. All kinds of fruit trees will live there. They will live on each side of the river. They will remain green and give fruit every month. Everybody say every month. Every month. Boy, I like this. That is because they live by special water. Hallelujah. Special water. Living water. Y'all, where is this living water? In, in me. Belly. In my belly. It's in me. That is the water that comes from the holy place. 
scripture says everything that can abide the water, make it go through the water. That's in Deuteronomy. Everything that can stand the fire, make it go through the fire. That is because they live by the special water. That's the water that comes from a holy place. Look what he says. And you will be able to eat their fruit. And you can use their leaves to make sick people well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes, y'all, let me tell y'all something. Sometimes don't be so quick to just pray for somebody if they tell you that they sick. Don't be so quick just to pray for that. Ask the Lord for discernment. Sometimes the sickness is not just sickness by itself. Sometimes the sickness is a result of decisions that's been made. Sometimes the, the sickness is a result of some uncleanness that could be taking place. But the, that's why when Jesus dealt with the man that was let down through the roof, he didn't just say you healed. He said your sins are forgiven. Like, why you see, you, you see, obviously the man is, he needs to be healed. He said, what you thought was easier? Now that I dealt with the real thing, man, take up your bed. Go ahead on about your business. Amen. <laughs> yo, where's this living water? In my belly. Yo, listen, yo, no, notice what the precursor. Ankles. Knees. Loins. After that, storage pain. Let that water get to my heart. Lord, I got some things in me. I don't know why it's there. God says, let's come on out here. Lord, but my mind, I feel like I'm not even worthy. Keep on walking. I know I'm changed, but I'm dealing with this condemnation. You still at the knees. Come on. Every time the enemy tries to stop us, y'all, he's trying to stop us, y'all, because there is an awakening that has to take place that will cause revival. He says, I'm bringing you to a place. This is a trip that it says that. He says, there's certain trees that you will know that you can eat the fruit. That's why the scripture says to know them that labor among you. Scripture talks about false prophets, false teachers. Yo, sometimes we don't even know who's who. He said, but there's going to come a time when you know you can eat the fruit. Guess what? They don't just produce fruit. They also produce leaves. And just the leaves will heal people. Hallelujah. Verse number 13. And this is the easy English translation. This is what the Lord your king says. This is the land that I am giving you to keep. Like in other words, when you get to this inheritance, when you get here, don't leave. Don't leave like Minister Sam was saying. Don't be like a prodigal son. What is it that make us feel like we got to go? Man, praise the Lord when you can come back. Man, praise the Lord that we made it back. But once we make it back, you got to be careful that you're not tempted to leave right back out. Some people fall hard and they can't get back. Everybody say ankles. Ankles. Got to get there. Everybody say knees. Knees. Everybody say loins. Loins. After that, Ah. Yes, ah. Whoa. Man, look at all them trees. Trees. They're green. They're strong. I couldn't even see it.
until I. This is the land that I'm giving you. Everybody say, this is my inheritance. This is my inheritance. He say, each of your 12 tribes have a part in this. Boy, I like this. Look what he said. He said, but I still remember Joseph. He said, matter of fact, oh, my God. He said, I remember Joseph. Joseph deserves two parts. For there's nothing that you do that escapes the fact the scripture says that the Lord is faithful to remember the, your labor of love. He's, he's not like a man to forget what you've done for him. He remembers the sacrifices. He remembers the obedience. Just imagine, y'all. Just imagine somebody reading about your family. And then they say, but Aisha, she gets two parts. Caroline, she gets two parts. Mwamba, he gets two parts. Can y'all, y'all, can y'all just imagine? And today, you heeded to my word. Two parts. Hallelujah. Verse number fourteen. Each tribe must have a part of the same size. I made a promise to your fathers that I would give them this country to live in. I gave it to them and their children to keep all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did y'all get that? Was that all right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, everybody, let's stand up to our feet real quick. Hallelujah. And once we awaken, what are we awaken for, y'all? For revival. Where you going? What's supposed to happen when you go? Revival. What's supposed to happen to the things that you touch? Everybody said they shall live. They shall live. Jesus, look, now, now, now think about what Jesus said. I have come that you might have life and even more abundantly. Woman, if you knew who I was, if you understood the gift of God, you would have been asking me, for some water, and I would have gave you living water. Living water. Living water. Both sides of the river. Trees. Y'all, the way I'm standing right now, they got people on this side, people on this side. There are trees on both sides. Both sides. Bearing fruit. How often, y'all? Every month. Every month. And I know some people think all I got is leaves. Y'all, Jesus looked at a fig tree that was supposed to produce fig, and he just only saw leaves in it. He cursed it. But what's supposed to happen with your leaves? Oh, stay green. They heal. So even my leaves are fruit. Y'all see why the enemy will attack your mind and try to make you think, question your identity, make you question who you are, make you question your self-esteem, make you wonder. He's Because he's trying to get you off your game. He's trying to get you not to know who you really are. He's trying to make you look at the feast. <laughs> you need somebody to bring you to the temple. That's why Jesus said, in my father's house, There'd be many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. But he just got through telling some people where I'm going, you can't even come. He 
told Nicodemus. He said, what you talking about? You can't even see it. Except the man be born again. He cannot even see the kingdom. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. And we bless you right now, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be awakened, Lord God, that we will call revival. In the name of Jesus, we pray.